It's been called the most important, most disruptive technology you've never heard of. But if you haven't heard of blockchain, you will almost certainly have heard of its killer app, Bitcoin. But blockchain isn't just about Bitcoin. And I think blockchain is going to have a major disruptive impact on purchase to pay and supply chain in the coming years. And I'd like to explain why. Blockchain, the underlying technology of Bitcoin, has been attracting a great deal of interest over the last 12 months. And there are very few industries or areas of business that won't be profoundly affected by it over the coming years. Money's been pouring into research and development, primarily in the fintech space. And this is unsurprising. The banks and financial institutions see the real possibility that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies could cut them out of lucrative transactional banking business. Because in the blockchain era, there's no need for trusted third parties to manage payments. Now you may think you've heard all of this before. The thing about blockchain is it removes the need for trust. There's no need to check and recheck paperwork because the blockchain delivers the guarantees of authenticity and accuracy. And that provides some really interesting use cases in supply chains. Just as Bitcoin removes the need for coins and cash or third party banks to provide security, so the blockchain can remove the need for physical transaction proofs like goods received notes, bills of lading, import and export documentation. Bitcoin has reinvented and democratised money. Instead of it taking days or even weeks to transfer money across borders at considerable expense by paying so-called trusted third parties, we can now use Bitcoin to do that same transaction almost instantly at a fraction of the cost. And we can trust Bitcoin because all of the transactions are held on a single ledger that anyone can see. It's the single version of the truth, and this is the key. To understand the relevance of blockchain to supply chain and purchase to pay, we do need to understand how it works. We could get very technical and talk about hashes and miners and, and proof of work, but that doesn't serve a useful purpose. That's a bit like trying to explain online shopping in terms of TCP IP. But there is one very important technical aspect that we do need to understand, and that is the single ledger, the single version of the truth. Let's use a, a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin as an example. We'll call it crypto dollars. The blockchain is a, is a series of records or blocks that records historic transactions. It's a bit like a series of backups that once backed up can't be, uh, can't be changed. And let's use an example of a small network of, of three people. Um, we've got Paul, Jane and Rachel. Um, let's say on day one, um, Paul has 150 crypto dollars, Jane has 50, Rachel has 250. Now they don't actually hold any money. Uh, this is just a record of, of their holding. And on day two, there's a transaction whereby um, Jane gives Paul 25 crypto dollars for some real world service. Um, so that Paul then has 175 crypto dollars, Jane has only 25. Rachel remains with her holding of 250. And let's say on day three, there's a, a further transaction, uh, this time of 75 dollars, whereby uh, Paul pays Rachel uh, those 75 dollars. No money actually changes hands, um, and the ledger is only updated with the consensus of the network. A block records the status of the ledger at a specific point in time. Each block is created when the network reaches a consensus on updates. They all agree that the update is valid, and each block is linked to its chronological predecessor using powerful mathematical encryption which guarantees the authenticity of the historic records. It creates an indisputable single version of the truth. Consider how we do business today. You provide me with goods or services and I pay for them. And in a business to consumer sense that's 
about as complicated as it gets. But it's different in a business to business world. It's much more complex. It starts with me creating a, a, a purchase order, a, a, a record of the things um, that I want and the prices that have been agreed. And I send that to you um, using uh, paper or by electronic means. You receive that purchase order and you create your version of that. You might call that a, a sales order. And then you fulfill the order, providing either the goods or services. And once it's been fulfilled, I'll create my record of that. I might call that a, a, a goods received note. You'll do the same thing. You might refer to that record as a, as a delivery note. Then you uh, create an invoice. You keep a record of the invoice and send it to me. I check that invoice against my goods received note, my purchase order, uh, and if all things match, then I arrange for, for payment via my bank. Uh, you check that payment against all of your records uh, to, to ensure that everything's in order. Uh, and then we both receive uh, a statement from our bank and we check that to make sure it matches all of our records. What a palaver. Why, why do we do this? Well, there's a simple answer. Uh, the answer is we don't trust each other, and for good reason, because there is multiple versions of the truth. But there's also a great deal of duplication of effort. If you think about it, a purchase order and a sales order are really records of exactly the same thing. A goods received note and a delivery note record exactly the same event. And two separate records of an invoice is just a, a simple duplication, not only of that invoice record, but it's a duplication of the records that have preceded it, um, that the record of what was ordered, what price, the fact that it was delivered, and all of those kinds of things. So what if we used the blockchain concept in purchase to pay or supply chain? The process would kind of be the same, We'd start off with a purchase order, but instead of me sending you a purchase order, I would uh, initiate the order and that record would be kept in the blockchain. There'd just be a single record. We would arrive at consensus that we understood what was being ordered. Then the delivery would happen and we would agree that that delivery had indeed happened. We wouldn't have two separate records of that single event. The next thing that would happen is of course you would send an invoice. But just think for a second why we would do that. And in fact in a blockchain scenario you wouldn't need an invoice. Because all an invoice does is confirm that the two previous events have happened. That an order had been made and that it had been fulfilled. So if you used something like a smart contract on a blockchain platform like Ethereum, you simply wouldn't need an invoice. The confirmation that those events, the order and the delivery have happened, is enough to simply initiate payment. That payment could happen instantly. And of course if you used a cryptocurrency, you wouldn't need a bank. 